Jesus told the disciples to cast the net on the right side of the boat after they had been fishing an entire night. They were tired, they were hungry, they were thirsty, they were ready to go home. And then at the end of this little fishing trip, Jesus tells them to do something else. This is hard. This is not fun. It's kind of humiliating, too. We've been fishing all night. You're telling just to cast the net on the other side of the boat. And so the only way that they were going to obey that order is if they were committed to following Christ's instructions, no matter how hard. That's what commitment is, and that's why obedience requires commitment. Commitment is making a decision to do something, no matter how hard it gets. And if you're going to be obedient, you've got to make up your mind, I'm going to be obedient to Jesus Christ, no matter how hard it is. Because sometimes obedience is going to lead to persecution. Sometimes it's going to lead to suffering. Sometimes it's going to lead to, to loss. Sometimes obedience is going to, decrease, going to decrease your bank account. It's going to decrease your income. Sometimes the quickest way from point A to point B is compromise. And to be obedient means taking the long, slow route. So if you're going to be obedient, you have to say, I'm going to, to follow God's will no matter how hard it is. And you might say, well, if obedience makes your life harder sometimes, then, then how does that go with what you were just saying about life works better when you do it God's way? But now you're saying obedience often makes life harder. Well, there's a couple of things you have to realize. First of all, disobedience means instant gratification instant pleasure, instant comfort, instant security, instant increase, if you will. Whereas obeying Jesus Christ, you have to delay gratification, and in the long run, that's when you see the benefits. So you're giving up instant pleasures and instant comforts for what's best in the long term. It's kind of like being wise and frugal and thrifty with your finances. That's not fun. When you do that, you have to deny yourself all kinds of fun things, the best things sometimes, the, the nicest things, keeping up with the Joneses, things like that. But in the long run, delaying your, your, your um, desires financially and being more frugal and thrifty means financial security and financial peace, a better and perhaps an earlier retirement, a bigger nest egg to pass on to your kids. It means a better night's sleep, less financial worry, and that's priceless. But in the short run, it's harder to be financially wise and frugal and thrifty. Sometimes the rewards of obedience will not be felt until the next life. And so while I, I stand up here and tell you that life works better when you do it God's way, but sometimes we don't experience all the benefits of obedience until the next life. Think about Christ and his obedience. What did it cost him? It took him, Christ's obedience took him to the cross. Paul, the Apostle Paul, a life of obedience for him meant suffering and persecution and imprisonment and ultimately martyrdom. So obedience didn't, didn't make life just peachy for Paul. But Jesus and Paul are in heaven today and they're experiencing the rewards of a life of obedience and faithfulness to Jesus Christ. And that's what we have to remember. As Christians, we're always thinking in the long term. We're always playing the long game as Christians. Sometimes obedience makes life harder, and that's why it takes commitment, but it always makes life richer because obedience always means a closer walk with Jesus. And that's better than anything this world can give you. When you're obedient, you have a clear conscience. You don't have to worry about guilt and shame and regret. You're close to Jesus. When you're obedient, Christ can fill you with his peace and with his power and with his strength. These are things that you forfeit and that, which, that you give up whenever you live in sin. When you're obedient, you just have this close communion with Jesus Christ. It's kind of like marriage and children. You know, when you get married and have children, it's a lot of sacrifices you got to make. I mean, being married and having kids means a lot more responsibility as a man. It means that you have to share and you have to wait in line sometimes. And it means that you have to get along with others and that you don't always get your way and you have to serve others. And it means that 
you're going to offend others, and then you've got to humble yourself and apologize, and they're going to offend you and get on your nerves, and you've got to share a house with people, and, and on and on. But in the long run, the richness of those relationships makes it so worth it. All the different sacrifices that you have to make to be a, a husband and a father, they're priceless. Obedience is always worth it, but it's often not easy. It requires commitment. Without commitment, you're only going to obey God's will when it's easy. And if you only obey God's will when it's easy, then you're not a follower of Jesus. You're in charge and not him. So when I was in middle school, I want to close with this story. I heard a little song that made a big impact on my life. I was already a, a Christian, or thought I was. I'd already been baptized, was raised in church, knew all about the Bible and all about Jesus. Thought I was just a normal Christian. And maybe I was. That was the problem. But I heard this song in church, and it, it goes like this. It says, I don't want to be, I don't want to be a casual Christian. I don't want to live, I don't want to live a lukewarm life. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a casual Christian. I don't want to be, I don't want to be a luke, I don't want to live, I don't want to live a lukewarm life. I don't want to live the casual Christian life. I realized through that song that there were two different types of Christians. There were casual Christians and committed Christians. There were lukewarm Christians and there were obedient Christians. And I realized through that song where I was, I was one of those casual Christians. I believed in Jesus. I thought Jesus was great. But I hadn't gotten to the point in my life where I said, Jesus needs to be the Lord of my life. I've been living in a way that is dishonoring to Jesus in a lot of ways. And it hadn't bothered me. It didn't bother me. But all of a sudden it did. I realized I have not been living the way a Christian should live. I need to be committed to Jesus Christ and to obeying his will, no matter how hard it is. And so that song and that experience changed my life from then on. It's never been the same. That's when I went from, from Jesus as Savior to Jesus as Savior and Lord. Maybe you need to make that commitment today. Maybe you've been living in sin as a Christian. Pornography, adultery, premarital sex, living together outside of marriage. Maybe you're considering divorce, stealing, lying, cheating, drunkenness, illegal drug use, filthy language, refusing to get baptized, not tithing, being uncommitted to church, maybe committing some sort of abuse, physical abuse against others, homosexuality, gossip, dishonoring your parents, disobeying your parents maybe, mistreating your spouse or kids, bitterness, unforgiveness, and maybe you've just been tolerating a life of sin. I want to encourage you to make a commitment to obey Jesus Christ. There is nothing more important, nothing better you can do with your life than to say, Jesus, I'm going to put you in charge from this day forward. And this is the kind of Christians we need to be and the kind of Christians that our church needs to produce. Committed, obedient Christians. 